three scores and ten gives you 17. Of course, when you add around the 700, it gives you around 77. Um, that is not an ordinary figure to us today and this week. Uh, we shall be talking about this very figure 77 and how all what we'll be saying melts into this figure through a personality. Welcome to Reflections. My name is Yusuf Nadab Osman. And uh, today and this week, we shall see or look at a person with that age, talking about my personality who is 77 years old. He's a chartered architect, an inductee into the Nigerian Construction Industry Hall of Fame. And of course, he is a banker, if you like. He is an insurance man, member of the Order of the Niger. And of course, one time Minister of State Health, Ministry that is, my guest is Gabriel Yakubu Aduku. We welcome to Reflection, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Are you I almost skipped, you know, a title you cherish because as you were discussing, and that title is uh, Amara Igohi One yes. Ata Igala. Correct, yes. Thank you. That That's is it. it. Mm -hmm. That's the title mm -hmm. at home. At home. Thank you. Uh, from a technical officer. Yes. Uh, to an architectural officer. Yes. And of course to an architect full fledged. Yes. And there you are, you became a chartered architect. Yes. And then uh, you rose to the topmost part of architecture in Nigeria and you are a member of the Hall of Fame of Nigerian Construction Industry Hall. Y yes. Um was that deliberate? Did you dream of being so? How did you become an architect from, I mean, look at, looking at the chain, <laughs> it just fits in one of the other as if it was planned. Mm. Well, maybe it's, I believe there is God. So maybe it's a God's plan for my life. Mm -hmm. Because I come from a typical rural farmer's home and the uh, home of a uh, uh, polygamist. Because I was lucky that my mother gave birth to all of us, and I was the last eh, of uh, 12, ende uh, 12 endeavors. And it's nothing but a farmer lived in, uh, in Naiba. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I grew up under a farming situation. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But there happened to be a school. There happened to be a missionary in Anigua, missionary called the CMML, that is Christian missionary in many lands, okay. as I is interpreted. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also have some of my cousins and friends who go to that school and some. So at a point, my dad said, follow them to school, since you are always uh, reluctant to go to farm. So, so I joined uh, my cousin, they call him Daniel Okolo. You know, so we are of the same age, sort of. I just, so it became a good company at the CMML primary school. And we started in 1950 or something like that, about that. 1950. Mm -hmm. And then we left Taingba. We left Taingba and we were just beginning standard uh, three, in the standard four, or something like that, in 1953, when for some reasons we had to, the school had to be disbanded. I won't go into the reasons why now, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we left there. I found myself in Ofante to conclude my primary school. Ofante is still a place in Ogugu area of uh, in Anambara local gov in uh, Olamaboro local government uh, in uh, Kogi State today. So, and uh, there I left to really do my full primary uh, f four. Standard four, they call it at that time, mm -hmm. in Angpa, the same Kwaibu school. Uh, that's where I started the Kwaibu school, 1954. From there, I passed on to Ida, mm -hmm. where I did uh, my, prim my primary five, six, uh, in 1955 and 56. At the end of 56, 
uh, I was luckily selected to go to Kenny Secondary School those days, mm -hmm. which was a northern, uh, one of the few northern uh, secondary schools. Uh, we were the first set to sit uh, West African exams in five years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we joined with the other class, which is six years, to do the exam that year, 1961. And from there, you moved on to Amadou Bele University? There, or yes, what really happened? yes. From there, after the sixth form, two years, I moved to Zaria mm -hmm. to take up an appointment under what they call IAR, Institute of Agric Research, mm -hmm. uh -huh. in the laboratory there for nine months. So in the real terms, all this time I never thought of architecture. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know mm -hmm. what is called architecture as such. After the nine months, uh, I got uh, enrolled into the university. So when did you really complete your architectural studies in Amadou Bele University? In which year was that? I entered straight in 1964-65. Mm -hmm. 64 when I was exactly how many years? 20 years. That's 20 years. Exactly. And in you completed? Each. Yes, that's when I entered. And you completed? And then I, I completed in 69-70 uh, I'm asking that question because I 64-69-70 that was uh, that that was when the, the, the war was raging on in Nigeria. Oh, yes, the Nigerian yes. Civil War, 66 to around 69, 70. We were. You were a student then. Yes. And then um, if you can just briefly tell us about the experience of a student at that time during the war. At that time. When we entered, it was a beautiful mix, everybody who entered from the West, the north, the north, east, east all over, everywhere, yes. In Amadou Bello. In Amadou Bello, yeah. right. Ribadu Hall, the popular mm. hall, mm. Alexander Hall, and mm. all that sort of. Okay. And even the women, though they were few, mm. you know, everybody felt at home there, mm. and doing your own courses. Mm. Yes. Uh, despite the uniqueness of uh, architecture course, we're still very active in the student unionism and all the rest of it, yeah. you know. So, uh, when in 1966, something was smoldering about uh, the nation, and we heard of the coup that happened. Mm. It was a shock to those of us particularly say from the northern portion of the mm. and lost Amod Bello. When a little more details were picked up, it generated what it did, mm. in which resulted in Araba. Okay. What does it mean? But what does it mean? Araba. You know more than me what he says. <laughs> Let's separate and go. Okay. If you can come and kill our own people like this. Who right. killed Sadauna? Mm. Thought it was the worst criminal mm. anybody can do. Mm. Most unhappy. Mm. So that became like fire. And we were enjoying the campus, including our friends, the evil boys, and all the rest of it. Mm. It could be arguments here and now you're brighter than me and brighter than you. But that was not. But when this happened, mm. oh. Well, as it were, you may have read the history or whatever. Come to think of Tapawa Balewa, mm. who we all admired as students. Mm -hmm. Just to listen to him. Politically speaking, as students, you had student governments. Yes. Had what did it do? Student union. Mm, the student union. Uh, we were part of those demonstrators. Mm. We didn't sleep again. Everybody mm. went. <laughs> 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 because it was again getting disrupted. Yeah, right, right. Yes, we didn't like the disruption. Okay. Mm. So go on, settled, and God used him to bring the war to an end. Right. I won't go into the nitty gritty of it. Mm. Yes. Mm. And I will take at this point mm. to make this remark about go on. Mm. What is that? That go on with one Nigeria. That's part of his name that was uh, 
okay. glitched out. Okay. The main issue at this point is you that has seen the war. You've yes. heard it, you've seen it, you've felt it. And today, a lot of people might not have really gotten that opportunity or that knowledge you have. And more or less talking about certain issues that may divide the country, mm. certain actions that may divide the country, mm. and certain utterances that may also divide the country. Mm. As a person who was Senate, what would you tell Nigerians about the need and the importance of going on with one Nigeria? Go on with one Nigeria. Yes. To me, I've said it in a few quarters, that there is no alternative and for us to retain the country called Nigeria as Nigerians, mm -hmm. let us find the mechanism of keeping it as a Nigeria. We have learned enough lessons from that war. We've gone into all kinds of arrangements to make us to forget that war and get on with development. NYS6, for example, Brain child of go on, and our, our mother Ali was able to implement it very well. Till today, NYC is running. Whether it carries the same meaning as he had it that time is a different story. Mm -hmm. So Nigerians, I'm sure even the younger ones today, they have not had other country than Nigeria. So the disaster of allowing any chaos to happen will be the worst ever the world will record. Because we have so gone into each other all, all over, from youth, even from our time, who experienced all that. What is it that God has blessed us in Nigeria? Apart from minerals and so on, and all this oil, forget that one. Mm. Physically, mm. what is the only the greatest blessings that he gave us? You may not quickly pick it like many. That is River Niger and Benue okay. that runs down the middle of the country into the sea. The best communication you can ever have for economic development mm. is on the water. Mm. But shortly after our independence, What's the status of those rivers today? Governments who are aware of all subsequent governors have been aware, up to even up to Jonathan that left. Mm -hmm. They will give contracts for dredging the river Niger and Ben. What's the result? What do you get? Why has it come to be at the crest? Eh, our uh, the national crest, isn't it? Can it, can it be correct with those animals without River Niger and Benue? So it's like drawing the, uh, the map of Africa without Madagascar. That's what we used to say those days. Mm -hmm. So if you put a crest of Nigeria and you don't see River Niger symbol there, it is not. It is not Nigeria. It is not Nigeria. Are we underutilizing this natural endowment? We are not utilizing, we are even abusing it. Right. When a government awards a contract that is dredging for a purpose, it didn't work. Another government will come and do the same, and it didn't work. Not one, not two, not three. All along, as I told you, up to Jonathan's time, awards were being made for dredging. Even in this regime, they are awarding. But because in this regime, effort has been made in order to dredge the Niger up to Baro. I mean, yes, it's an asset from God, and if we abuse it, we are causing ourselves. Let us go and apologize to God, and you forgive us, and all these are wranglings will stop it, because River Niger and uh, Benue can admit people from Alaska straight into the interior. They go to or go to uh, wherever, go to Yola. When you are praying as a Muslim, what are these hands all about? Signifying the supreme leader, the supreme creator, which is God. You are, you are appealing to God.
when you do this. When the Christians want to say hallelujah, they do the same. These two hands, one is Benue, one is Niger. <laughs> and the hub is, is the there, is the head. <laughs> that conference called Lokoja. Lokoja is a heritage, is one of the heritage cities of United Nations. But ask them in detail, why is Lokoja a heritage city? It's why is it if I may ask you? You are from Lokoja. <laughs> you will take it on. Mm. Again, because I have asked several times, why has it qualified to be recognized mm. by United Nations as a heritage city? Mm. If there are heritage of Lugard, symbols of Lugard here and there, or those uh, navigators who came and perished there, or the merchants who were on the river, anything that happened, let it be so detailed that we know. And if you value it, come and help to restore some of them that are restorable. That is the appeal we are going to give to United Nations. And we will have support. Without government investing, we will get River Niger and Benue restored, sustainably dredged, that boats and everything, cargo, all, smooth can come on it. We'll take a break at this moment. When we come back, we'll continue a discussion on political issues and the other issues surrounding you. Thank you very much. You've been at the center of, uh, you know, can I say, political activities in Kogi State, Lokoja, for instance, that confluence town. <coughs> and um, you were part of those, or you're a member of the National Constitutional Conference in 1994, there about, uh, 1980, 94, 95, there about. Mm -hmm. And then um, you're also part of the the, 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 this very republic, okay, 1998, that was just, you know, hatched up together to 1999, and it was fruitful to date. Over around, over 20 years, we've been on political succession, successful ones for that matter. As somebody who has been that, as somebody who has aspired to be the governor, as somebody who has aspired to be a senator, as somebody who was part of the formation of the PDP, What's your comment about the successful transition since 1999 to 2019 up to date? This smooth, successful transition that Nigeria has gone through, in your own opinion, has progress been made politically? If you try to restrict me to that angle, I find it difficult because I've been part of uh, coming into politics when Babangida, when he took over, from Buhari and said uh, they will not want you want new breed to come on board. Okay, as a young breed, you joined. So I joined mm. as the young breed mm. as at that time. That was 19, uh, uh, 1989 or thereabout. Babangida, when he formed the NRC and, and the SDP. And the SDP. Yeah. Yes. So uh, for politics from that time on to this time, uh, I'd been in it, so I couldn't withdraw just like that. But I, 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 was, I was tempted to say, look, I've had enough. Let me go back to my profession. But once you touch that place and you are arranging people and they begin to pick to you, you can't easily go. That's why I've stayed on. It's constitutional conference where I participated, which you were asking. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be very meaningful supposed to be very meaningful. But the circumstances around Abacha ruling was a controversial thing, both internationally and some quarters also in Nigeria. I got elected from my constituency to be there. Mm -hmm. People voted for me to come. I was not just nominated. Mm -hmm. And in the conference, I was nom I, they said I'll give, they give me a chairmanship. Mm -hmm. It was opposed heavily by my own people. So why were your people objecting to your chairmanship of the country? Uh, 
I don't know. Nobody told me that. But, but the thing went on on the floor. Mm. And the majority on the floor said, I will remain the chairman of the revenue allocation. I because in that opposition, yes. I know you should try to prove yes. other people wrong. Yes. Mm. I made it open, right. political discussion. Mm. Some people who felt too big to be in my committee, they worked themselves out and went into other committees. Mm. Thank God we got approval, carried my members to go and fly over all the oil producing areas in an aircraft. The same aircraft which can land on sea and, and land carried us to Ajakuta and dropped us there on water. After our survey, those of us who went, a total mix of Nigerians, the Yoruba Samo, each state had one member. The people from the south where the petroleum is came up with a rigid position of nothing less than 25%. Oh. If we go into derivation, okay. which we did, mm -hmm. see, they will not take anything less than 25%. I say, no, you can't dictate to us. Some people, some of them stuck to it and never signed my paper. But the rest of the people, when we finally decided, you know, endorsed the submission that mineral producing areas would receive not less than 13 percent of what comes out of their okay. out of, comes as revenue from their source okay at this final point i must give credit to late general yaradua because he took over the final financing that uh, not less than 13% for mineral producing areas. It's not just oil. It's not just gas. Mm. Anything. Derivative now, minerals. Everything. Minerals. Mm. Because mineral is consigned to federal government only mm. to mine and sell. Mm. Abacha was so pleased with it that he marked me to become minister of works in his time. All right. But again, you know our politics. Mm. He called me, I went to Villa. He sat me in one person's office. He engaged me discussing, discussing until, he said, oh, it's too late. Uh, uh, the president is now with somebody else. We'll give you another time. That was a ploy. And the president never saw me again. Yeah, that was God's plan. Just like you had it from the beginning yes. to this time So that's around. how it continues. So it's what it wasn't you as per se. It <laughs> no. was a plan you're following. Yes, yes. And that's a natural way. Yes, yes. Okay. Unfortunately, we have to relax and get things done properly. Okay. And it is possible to do it in this country for God's sake. Can you precisely tell us how? One of it is what I've, I've already done extensively with you. Let us all believe that there's River Niger and Benway. That is one. What's the second one? The second one, mm. we'll go back to the basics. Mm. Mm. What are the basics? Native, native authority arrangements, mm -hmm. which worked. Okay. Let us now look at you as the Minister of State and the Minister of Health. Oh, yes. That was between 2007 nice. In 2008. 2008. That was a short stint. I mean, uh, you've gone down into history as somebody who has just served with the least. Within the first two weeks that I got in there, mm. President Yaradua, may his soul rest in peace, invited me to Villa and said he was not interested in the contract that was awarded to just one person to do a sample or a model primary health care building or center in each of the local governments throughout Nigeria with 744 or so. 74. Uh, he called me to this uh, office and said, this is what he wants to do. Can I undertake it? And he will give me two weeks to do it and bring. And what were those things? Terminate this contract or suspend this contract. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then 
order it to go, you know, evaluate all that it takes that the man has done on site since he signed the contract. Mm -hmm. Evaluate what he had done on ground. Mm -hmm. In these 774 local governments, mm -hmm. in each of them. Mm -hmm. All right, evaluate. Mm -hmm. And then take note of what has been paid to him. Now, do the adjustments that we will know whether he still has more from government on what he has executed or proceed to return, but we will stop the contract. And it gave me two weeks to do that. That's a big assignment. The whole country. Yeah, the whole country, 774 local governments. So I said, Mr. President, sir, I have not evaluated the, what it involves, but I do know that the country is very wide and communication is not the easiest. But give me additional two weeks. I didn't want to dump this, uh, something about it. I said, give me additional, so one month. So he put the committee together for me, justice, finance, uh, health, and then he said to do this job. And we started. First thing I had, go to the ministry. Can you release some money for us to take off? While the one that is being arranged by the committee through the president, Minister of Finance, to release while they are working on it, mm -hmm. so that I don't lose time. Mm -hmm. The Prime Self told me, no, there is no money for that. So I just went ahead, made my own arrangements with Zenit Bank, mm -hmm. and they gave me a credit. It is on that credit I started off. I borrowed my experience with Sarhijo, mm -hmm. who was uh, leading the PTF. Mm -hmm. It was the beautiful arrangement which, Saga, uh, which uh, Buhari sat on. And then, but it was all Sahilio's job of networking and also reaching all simul technology had not grown well even up to that time. Mm -hmm. But I borrowed from him substantially, including my own profession. When I was president of Nigeria Institute of Architects, I had friends in the engineering, in quantity surveyors, in all of them. So similar organizations, similar bodies, associations of engineers and quantity surveyors put themselves, they agreed to work with me, you know. Unfortunately, with a bit of technology, the quantity surveyors in every senatorial district where these projects are in the, in the local governments, every senatorial district became a center and they were able to move out. Within one week, they covered their various areas. And at the end of that week, they were all sending in their reports. And by the third week, we had assembled all the reports. The last week, I took to put it down, to put it with PowerPoint, where I went myself personally, experienced things on it. I put it all on the week. So I put it off to, I told Mr. President, I'm ready with my report, dead one month. No Kobo has come from the ministry, no Kobo has come from anywhere, except to remain on a borrowed money to do government job. And I was not, I didn't even know the contractor when we were doing all this. It's on the final report session that I called him to agree with what we saw in their books. That this is what is being paid, Are you, is that correct? He said yes, that's what is received, okay. What you, this is the value of your contract? He you say yes. That, that's all I need to know from you. So the rest is in my report. That's how I did it and I succeeded. And I have injured so many people. I don't know whether I didn't even injure Yaradua himself. Mm -hmm. So I did it. That's now, your first month in the office. That was two weeks into the office. Mm. An office which I almost rejected, I must tell you. What did the president say? So he just, he was amazed. That's all I could say. And at the end, he said, thank you. Okay. He said, thank you. So he asked the chief of staff, what do they go from there now? He says, okay, chief of staff said, they will move it to the National Council of, uh, um, the one that all the governors who, who come. Council of State. Council of State, yes. Mm. For them, since it relates to state, let them discuss. 
the rest of it won't engage me again. Mm -hmm. I tried, I presented it to them and all the rest of it. They had their questions, had their reservations. And I'm telling you, as we sit down, the problem had not been resolved. Somebody is busy, as busy milking away and all the rest. I, just, I didn't know about it. But I didn't know I've offended a lot of people along the line, doing the right thing. See, so that was one. The Ministry of Health. Yes. What about the Pedro Committee, the malaria, oh. you know, the malaria issue That's that uh, you know, your you. ministry was handling, thank you. and you had a target towards 2015, most 2015. likely, to get rid of malaria in, in this, country. this country. Yeah, very good. Thank you. I was a major one. Mm. You know, when I got into the ministry, the first point they gave me was a committee that was already existing mm. over this malaria thing. And the presentation that was done by one professor, about seven uh, professor, yeah, professor Pedro, Pedro mm. honestly, he made his presentation with his other colleagues. And I said, at the end, he said, Tom, what do you want me to do for you now? This is your presentation is beautiful. As far as uh, my ordinary mind is concerned, it's very logical and well arranged. So what do you want me to say? Look, we just need your political will to support our, this program and get government to really put together you know a kind of body that will look after this design that he has made so political will having understood what he said I said okay I'll give you the bit that I have and we will drive it to success I'll cut the story boop, boop, boop. then the National Council of Health took place in Lagos. And we went to Lagos with a, with a program. And the people in the ministry very carefully took it out of the program. I called them, I said, look, put it in the program. This man is coming to address us, mm. all right? So it was a struggle for me to put it in the program. And they did. And I invited the man, he made his presentation it became what what do you call it it was uh, uh, it was herald it was welcomed by all who came to participate all of them commissioner for health director for uh, in health a permanent secretary in health all those who constitute council of health from each of the states they were all there including the federal chaps who were with me my minister, who was a bit quiet about what was going on, he knew more de details but perhaps than me, then also jumped up at the professor's presentation. It was an overwhelming uh, reception for it. Overwhelming. Everybody, not asked to get up, just simultaneously when he finished. So that Pedro means give us a chance to mm. know that this is feasible, isn't it? That's not what it means. What were they up to, the Pedro Committee? What did they want to do that it became did, so much, you know, that raised, uh, attracted so much applause like that? What did they want to I, do about if malaria? If I'm to take you through those details, you will agree with me. No, just in summary. In summary, mm. he had done, he's been on this thing for not less than 27 what years. What is that thing? On the elimination of malaria. Right, right. Yes. Mm. And, that and can, that according to him, that could be achieved by 2015. And by 2015, if they set up, if we set up that year, mm -hmm. that 2000, by 2008, if it was all well set up, by 2015, collaborating with all the countries around us, that's West African countries, and so on, so that he doesn't filter back, we we'll get it done. Yes. That was great. Yes. So what, it was you were point. looking for political will. Yes. And you are a politician, your yes. minister was there, you were there. Yes. I couldn't drive the political will into Asorok. Why? Because only a few years before he came in, even less than less than four years, when uh, Clinton came from US mm -hmm. Uh, the, the America, the UK one, who was that labor person, he came. Mm. Then a France, a France uh, president also came mm. with our own president. They, they just rolled out what they call 
whole back malaria. malaria. So where am I coming from to come and bring another one that will roll away what they have ro uh, rolled to a point? I didn't know that that silent thing was on. But I was facing the facts as I saw it. Mm. And it carried the crowd. Mm. What crowd do I need for that decision other than those of them in the ministry all over the state mm. that gave the applaud mm. to the presenter? Mm. That was it. I didn't tell you. They didn't reflect it amongst the resolutions that should go to council. They omitted it. Out of the 16 or so they proposed to take to council. The resolution of the Council of Health, Council on Health. On Council Ministry, uh, yes, the mm. Council, the National Council of Health. Mm. Their resolution of that conference, of mm. that which we held, mm. for which drew an aspect of it, this mosquito thing, drew this kind of applause, mm. Eh? Mm. was not seen as an item to be reported amongst the 16 noted uh, items. You got me? Yeah, yeah. Amongst the 16. So when I called the officer in charge, I said, oh, we are going to cancel. Unfortunately, my minister is not here, so I will have to make this report. Please let me have your thing. So when I noticed, I said, 16? Where is the, your resolution on... Uh, Mosquito yeah. elimin el elimination. Mm. Where is the resolution? You say, well, it's not counted as one. Say you. Or I go and bring me all the resolutions that was taken at the, at the council. Then he brought 25 of them. Still, it was not there. <laughs> so I said, okay, go back. Go and add a resolution that this is what happened. Before I go to council, and that's what happened. When they put it on, I got to council and I presented it that this is the outcome of what, uh, of our something. This is the large resolution. We are still to condense it to whatever is discussable at the, at the, but I want to plead with these ones that have been circulated before, add the 26th resolution which is on the elimination of malaria. I asked in council, where the president was sitting down there mm. listening to me, say, add this one. Because the earlier uh, thing that was circulated, it is not there. And I will explain in council when I'm given opportunity to do so. So in a way, that opportunity was not given because my work, my presentation has challenged the rollback malaria. What has the rollback malaria achieved for me and you today in this country? In the Ministry of Health. Yes. You had a stint of seven months and you left unceremoniously. Yes. What really happened? Because did you resign? If yes. yes. Why did you resign? Yes. I had to resign mm. because the accusation that was coming to me, which needed to be proved, would involve me sitting down where they are proving. What was the accusation? So, the accusation is that I, I encroached. They were leaving it only on me to have encroached and, uh, on the president's uh, directive. That is why I wasn't going along with the president's directive that all monies, as at that time, which was not spent in the budget, should be returned to the treasury. Uh, to the treasury. Yes. I have led the ministry mm. into taking those funds and sharing it to uh, uh, sharing it to ourselves and those other people. How much was the leftover, if I may you call it leftover? I had no idea of what was left in the uh, 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 that should be returned to the treasury because I wasn't involved in any of the financial movements of the ministry. Mm. I've had my share. When they were to give me money to do uh, the first assignment, they refused to give me. So I didn't bother myself of how they moved my money. Only to sit down in my office, and then the permanent secretary of the office, the director of finance and administration, then another permanent secretary in, uh, attached to the 
uh, is it to the palm sec or to the minister? I don't know. One, so there were two palm sec. And then the director of finance himself, they brought 7 million naira to me as my welfare package for Christmas and, uh, and uh, Salah, because both of them came together that, uh, that very year mm -hmm. of 2007. Mm -hmm. They came within the same month of uh, December. And I said, look, oh, Mr. Pamsek and your group, that came, wow, where, I, where have you got this money from? Did Dan Clote give us some money? He said, no, they know how to do their thing in the ministry here. I wasn't, no. They know how, this is what happens normally. All of them think like, like that, that it is what happens normally in the ministry. I said, uh, so I called my PA, please take this thing, put it aside. I'm going to, down to see the minister. What did he do? Would they give him, and so give her, or oh, he say a lady. So I went down and made the minister. I said, yeah. Oh, they came to they gave her her own portion was uh, eight million. Yes, and uh, well, we who are politicians, we need it. I should carry it and go. I say, did you know the details of how it came? He said, just go. They say this is how they normally do it here. Eh? So, so that is how that resources came. And when I got back, somehow my small sense was not settled. So I said, okay, tomorrow we are going to be near for this blood something. PA, please, as it is, keep it there when we come back, when we look at how to, to handle the matter. And we were coming back, and this rumor, which I was telling you, started moving around, in which brought, ELCC said they want to see me in their office. And as I told you, that is how I made my presentation. That's it. When they asked me about it, I said, I don't know anything about it. None of my staff was involved. And I expect genuine money to come from Pamsek and his colleagues that like that. Why should I doubt them? And it's a welfare thing. It is what they are used to doing. So I, I didn't, it didn't occur to me that the EFCC will come around and be asking me. So that is what happened. And when they took, took all of a sudden they said EFCC is looking for us, is this, is this. They were already trying to handcuff me. They were trying, then fortunately for me, it came at a weekend or something when they came. So I cried out. I said, how can you, where is the minister himself, herself? He was still in the US. So I appealed to a few people who assisted me to say, no, they can't take him alone. The middle minister has to be, be there when they are doing So immediately the planners were confused. That if they had picked me, then they would have modeled the case and leave her out there because she was out there with the Aradua's wife on uh, whatever cancer discussions they were doing. You know, so, so fortunately for me, the clique was infuriated and said, there is reasoning for you to wait to bring this fellow to get the minister to come back. That's why I didn't go to sleep in, the, in detention that weekend. God's intervention, that's what helped me out. They went on. When they got the minister came, both of us went to EFCC place and we were detained mm -hmm. and then we were moved to court. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. we, met the, we went to court with our lawyers, okay? In the court, the the chap presented it at the first, and uh, are you guilty, we are not guilty, this are not guilty. So they set another date that we should come back. When we came back, they already said, okay, to do. But before they went off, the prosecutor, that's the name I was looking for, the prosecutor thought over himself. He looked at the contents of ac accusation. I said, he is a young career person in this. He's in the middle of his something. He cannot prosecute an innocent person looking at what he's been given to go and prosecute. Then one of my lawyers said, what is he going to the witness box for? What is he going when the prosecutor has withdrawn? He said, so he's startled 
and then wrote somewhere in the judgment that I ought to be put in the, in the witness box to say something about it. Ha! So could you understand? When he put it in his judgment, quickly my lawyers wrote against it and appealed against that his, his uh, judgment. That's how we went to appeal court. And of course, the appeal court looked at it. It was all nonsense. They threw it away. And as they were throwing it away, they were still not satisfied. Mm. They, are, they went to the Supreme Court. What came out of the Supreme Court judgment? And the Supreme Court waited for more information in their normal process. When you file an appeal, you will follow it up with documentation, which is normal, I think. They couldn't. His, their lawyer could not back it. Neither did they do it themselves until three days. Then the, the Supreme Court people met after they waited and that time expired. They met immediately and said, look, let's go. Let's have a meeting and uh, decide on this case. And just before they met, I'm sure information went back to EFCC and they wrote withdrawing the appeal to Supreme Court. So you were acquitted? So I there. was acquitted mm. the completely mm. and everything. Mm. Completely. When I was acquitted in a high court, uh, the chief of staff to Jonathan then wrote me that congratulate you that this and this, but your case is still not finished. I have the letter. My case is not finished because I was not acquitted. So I couldn't understand what was going on. And at the end of the day in June, uh, the, uh, in, in June 2011, the Attorney General of the Federation, Adoke, he said, in two weeks, I'll get you to see Mr. President. And President will do something about what happened to him. That two weeks has not elapsed till tomorrow. It has been a drama for mm, me. It has been a bit drama. Really. Yes. He, didn't, he didn't find it easy, really, at the Minister of Health. The seven months were very it's, tumultuous. It, it was tumultuous. Yeah, very tumultuous. Despite well. the fact that the mm. position did not befit me mm. from all my experience, did it? But from yet the start. It, it, co it caused troubles. Troubles, for me. really. And tried to disgrace me. Now, on a final note, what word do you have, really? Somebody who has gone through these things from the beginning to the end, good, bad, opposite, up and down, and things like that. What word do you have to public office holders in this country today? Public office holders. I'll go on my knees and beg them, all of them, no exception, to come down to realities. And let us not be consumed in Nigeria, for God's sake, from our own handwork, handwork which they call corruption. Corruption has so many heads, but the worst one is the one that circulates around finances and made people in offices to take wrong decisions at the wrong time and all of it, and it affects development. It affects physical development. I thought that was what uh, Buhari came out to fight when he first took over and won the public mind. Isn't it? We have all wronged God, and we should apologize to God, we should confess our sins to God in from all these corners and come back to reality and manage what creation has done for us. Okay. Okay. Creation has blessed us. Okay. Not just minerals all over the places. Good rain at good time. Mm. Most of the time. Good climate. Good climate. Mm. Excessive. All this climate change that they are happening. Mm. Whether, no, whether you feel a bit comfortable, a little while you are back. Mm. Nigeria is blessed really. Too much. Yeah. See? If Nigeria can be part of a decision to resuscitate the Lake Chad, which has gone down to one tenth of what we used to know a few years back, they are resuscitating it in the interest of keeping everybody at peace in that area and protect the Nigerians, if that is the theory. Okay? 
Let us go back and look at the one that services our country, River Niger and Benue. Let us give it to us professionals who have proved our cases, who have proved our integrity in this country and have suffered for it. Let us do it without cost, cost to government. Finally, I normally end up with this question and yeah. I want you to answer it briefly, you know, maybe it's 120 seconds. What do you want to be remembered for? Oh. So, what do I want to be remembered for? Not to be linked falsely or to be falsely accused upon all my efforts to do good things in politics. For God's sake, in this country, integrity has its value and should be respected from all corners. And a bit of it I have. I don't claim to have everything. Bit of it I have. And I should be respected. And this country owes it to all of us that we should, we should recount, we should uh, submit ourselves to the Creator and ask Him to forgive us. Gabriel Yakubu Aduko, it's our pleasure. You've come along. We thank you so much for spending your time with us on this program. Thank you very much for uh, recognizing me and sparing your own time. I know how precious your time is, and to be with me, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. We must also thank you out there. You've been part of this discussion all the while. And uh, we hope and pray that you are going to be part of it next time on S2 when we come your way with another personality. On behalf of our guest, yeah, Gabriel Yakubu Aduku, uh, former Minister of State Health, I am Yusuf Darabusman saying, see you next week. Thank you.